You know those little metal ears that attach link bars to a chassis? Well, the cool kids use CNC plasma tables or laser cutting machines to print out several identical tabs at the push of a button. But over here at the nerds table, we're gonna make identical machine quality parts with a Harbor Freight grinder. So there. Hey Garage Fabbers, I'm Man Candy at Man Candy's Creations, and in the last video, we built a cross member for the upper link bars of the Parallel 4 link we're putting on my wife's 1987 Mitsubishi Mighty Max. In order to attach our upper link bars, we need to create some link bar mounting tabs. Making those tabs could be as simple as drawing them by hand directly on some steel plate, cutting them out, and drilling a hole. There, done. Doing things this way may cause some problems later in the build because of lack of planning. What's the distance between the upper and lower link bar tabs? Is that distance enough to keep the axle from twisting under acceleration? Are those tabs going to be strong enough? For those that haven't seen my suspension basics videos, man, you're gonna be so lost on this one. Just kidding, because here's a quick review anyways. In order to have a properly working parallel four link, a couple rules need to be followed. We essentially need to create this rectangle with link bars. That is, the top and bottom link bars need to be the same length, and the ends of the bars need to be the same distance apart. It's not important that the upper bushing is directly above the lower bushing, but it is important that we know how far apart they are so we can match the link bar tabs on the axle. In other words, the upper and lower control arms could be offset over here or over here. As long as the bars are the same length and they remain truly parallel, you will have a consistent painting angle at all ride heights. I've decided to reuse the lower link bars that were made by the original builder of this truck. Since the lower link bar mounts are already made, I need to find out where in relation to our new cross member the upper link bar bolts will be. The blank side of a large T-square lined up to the center of the lower link bar bolt will help us determine what link bar offset is needed, if any. If I mark the lower bolt, I can measure up 10 inches to determine how high the upper link bar bushings will be. In Suspension Basics Episode 5, I talked about why I choose to space out the upper and lower links 10 inches. Go check it out if you haven't seen it. 10 inches up from the center of the lower link bar mounting holes is, wow, it's exactly at the top of the cross member. That'll make things really easy when drawing it up. To start the pattern for the tab, I'll draw a two inch square to represent the two inch square cross member we made in the last video. Since our 10 inches brought us right to the top of the cross member, I'll draw a line straight off the top of the square. This line is the vertical center of the upper link bar end. To find the horizontal center, I want to determine where the center of the lower link bar bushing is. We can see that in order to mount the upper bushings directly above the lower bushings, the center of the upper bushings would be exactly an inch away from the cross member. When putting things in place on the cardstock mock-up, we can see that one inch is a problem. The link bar ends will rub the cross member. That's not gonna work. We could notch out the cross member to make clearance, but that's more work than I wanna do today. Instead, let's just move the bushing away from the cross member a half inch to prevent any rubbing. By doing this, the upper and lower bushings are no longer directly above one another, and that's okay. We can offset the bushings a couple inches if necessary. We just need to remember that this offset needs to be present in the rear axle link bar tabs. Now that we have our bushing location mapped out, if we draw some lines connecting the circle to opposite corners of the square, we have our first look at what our upper link bar tabs will look like. Cut it out and we have a template. Let's get to actually creating some tabs. To cut out your tabs, all you need is a grinder with a cutoff disc installed. Trace around your template and start cutting. I'm using 3 16 inch steel plate. Cut the straight lines accurately and rough cut any curves. We'll even out the imperfections later. Take extra care in accurately cutting where the tabs contact the cross member. Remember, these two edges determine the location of the bushing in space. All the other edges are just superficial. If you have access to a plasma cutter, we're going to modify our cardstock template to create a wooden template. If you don't have a plasma cutter, feel free to jump to the next section. Using a straight edge to guide a plasma cutter torch creates crisp cuts. 
we can create these same clean cuts by tracing around a template. It's important to know though that a plasma torch can't cut flush against a straight edge or a template. That's because there's some distance between the side of the torch tip that contacts the straight edge and the cutting arc. This needs to be taken into consideration when making the template if you need your final part to be true to size. The best way of determining this distance is to make a test cut and then measure how much material remains between the straight edge and the cut. A sliding T-square is great for this. We can lock the ruler in place and use it to modify our cardstock template. By removing that amount from all the edges, we can use the cardstock template to create a wooden template. A quarter inch thick MDF works well with my hypertone torch. Fine tune the edges of the wooden template, especially those that contact the cross member. Now we're ready to clamp the template to the plate and trace around it with the plasma torch. I'm using 3 16 inch steel plate. The wooden template will burn a little and deteriorate, so if you need to cut a whole lot of parts, consider taking a little extra time to make a template out of metal. After cutting all your parts, stack them together, taking extra care to line up the edges that contact the cross member. All the other edges may or may not match up, kind of like the one we cut with the grinder, but we'll fix this in the next step. Clamp your stack tightly together with some locking clamps or a vise and start smoothing out the edges. My favorite tool for this is the Cubitron 2 flap disc mounted on my angle grinder. They're stupid expensive though, so some 80 grit flap discs from Empire Abrasives will work great as well. If you go that route, don't forget to punch in GarageFab at checkout for 10% off. I highly recommend drilling through this stack with a drill bit the size of your bushing through bolt. That will allow you to hold the stack tightly together with a bolt and ditch the clamping pliers. I usually do that and I don't know why I didn't this time. Instead, I had to drill each hole separately using the first tab as a guide to drill the rest. Maybe I'll remember when I make the tabs for the axle. The edges of these tabs are extra sharp now, so knock them down with a sanding disc or a file. The last step in preparing these tabs for install is to bevel the edges you plan to weld. This is a really good habit to get into, especially on thick metals. It allows the weld to penetrate all the way to the center of the tab, creating a strong weld. The link bar tabs are ready to be welded onto the front cross member. But before we do that, we need to determine where on the cross member we want the upper link bars to be located. As a general rule of thumb, you want your link bars to be mounted as wide as possible. In other words, as close to the wheels as you can possibly get, especially on load-bearing link bars. That is the link bars with an air spring or a coilover mounted to them that supports the weight of the vehicle. The closer the load-bearing link bars are to the wheels, the less likely the axle tube will bend over time under the vehicle's weight. Non-load bearing link bars are not as important. However, I would still suggest you keep them as wide as possible. With the lower link bars set as wide as they can possibly go, the width of the upper link bars aren't quite as crucial. In theory, all we really need to keep the axle from rotating backwards under acceleration is a single bar right in the center. I wouldn't recommend it because that could potentially take away a lot of the axle stability. But that also means that the upper link bars don't have to be as wide as they possibly can, which is good on this truck because that may interfere with the shock tabs as well as the bag brackets. I mentioned in previous videos that this truck used to have triangulated upper arms. The angle of the upper bars allowed them to move freely without contacting the air springs or the bag brackets. So I've decided to set the link bars inwards just far enough to clear the shock tabs, but not far enough to clear the bag brackets. Instead, what I'm going to do is create curved upper link bars that snake around the bag brackets. This gives me a little more axle stability and something to say, hey, that's kind of neat. 
So in order for our upper link bar ends to avoid our shock tabs, the tabs on the axle will need to be six and a half inches away from the frame. So our link bar tabs on the front cross member will be six and a half inches away from the frame. When welding on the link bar tabs, it's best to have them assembled to the bushing you plan to use. That'll keep the ears straight up and down at the exact width you need. The problem with that is those ears will get really hot and melt the polyurethane in the bushings. That's where these guys come in. These are mock-up bushings that I got from Thor Bros. This isn't a paid advertisement, I just really like them. You take the rubber out of the bushing and the aluminum mock-up bushings go in place. Then you can assemble the ears with the through bolt and weld everything together without worrying about the bushings melting. You do not need the mock-up bushings. You could just use the center sleeve, but it's important to know that if your edges aren't perfect, your ears won't be perfect either. The front link bar tabs are in place and it's time to build some link bars. That's coming up in the next episode. Until then, keep moving forward.